and welcome to Strawberry Patches episode 14. I'm very excited because today is almost podiversary. It's been about one year that I have started making these videos and I'm very excited that I kept doing it because there has been so many changes in my life. And uh, as I promised last episode, I'll be telling you some exciting news at the end of this episode. So, my name is Marina. I'm coming to you from New Zealand in Auckland. It's a beautiful autumn day with lots of sun. And um, here I am to talk to you about my knitting, doll making, spinning, uh, some yummy, yummy, delicious New Zealand yarn and uh, our local knitting shop with our knitting group. And to tell you a little bit about my life here. So welcome everyone who is new or who is coming back again. You can find me on Instagram as Marina Toys or Marina Hoja and on Ravelry as Marina Toys. And welcome to follow me anywhere and post comments or just tell me what you think and how your knitting is going. So without further ado, I want to tell you about my finished objects. In the past month, it's been about one month since I recorded, I haven't done much knitting, but I have done a lot of doll making. And I think I showed you that I was making some Easter bunnies back then. So here are my two finished Easter bunnies. And as you can see, one is kind of a boy, the other one is a girl. What I like about them is they're quite easy to make and the faces, I think they're quite cute because of the long eyelashes. And also I really love this fabric because it's, it's fun and it's um, perfect for babies. So these are my first finished objects, the bunny rabbits. Then what I did was I finally finished my New Zealand doll, which I called Kia Ora, which means this is the first word I learned when I was applying for a visa to come here. It means welcome. And this became the name of this girl. So when I saw this fabric, when I just arrived here, I thought, oh my God, this is the New Zealand fabric. But <laughs> the funny thing is everyone who lives here and I show it to, they say, this is such an Aussie dress. So, Okay, this is my first attempt at making a New Zealand doll, which I will have to try harder to make it more New Zealandish because apparently the more New Zealand fabric is like green ferns or the kiwi birds or many other birds. There are so many birds. At the end of this episode, I want to show you my trip to the zoo. So if you want to stick around for that, it's really lovely with this amazing kiwi birds and... Uh, other cute animals. So here we are. I just tied up the hair so that I can show you both ways. But she has this lovely, long, colorful hair that I used the yarn from the previously knitted socks that I think matches perfectly the dress. So that's Kia Ora. After that, I finally finished these two dark beauties that I've started back in, um, well, maybe I started them here, I'm not really sure anymore. Maybe I started them in Bali. But anyways, this is the first one, which I'm still looking for a name for this one. If you have any good suggestions, I would be love, I would love to hear them. I think this pale pink looks really cute with darker fabric. I painted, this time I didn't stitch, I painted the eyes and I just stitched the mouth and I used some fluffy um, yarn for the hair, which is my normal one for this kind of uh, beauties. And this one, you can tell she's my favorite because of all these extra things that I have decided to do on her face. So there are some stitch like stars and some dots with acrylic paint. Again, acrylic eyes 
and some cute buttons and um, some extra stitches. I wanted her to look bright because this fabric that I bought in Indonesia, wait, this was in Malaysia, but in the, it kind of is the batik that is um, popular all around Indonesia. I wanted this to, this part to be as bright as the lower part, hence the, the bird. And, um, oh my God, what was your name? I found this beautiful African name and I forgot it. <laughs> I'm going to put it down there. So this, it's, it's not a usual name that I would normally use or hear. That's why it's a bit hard to remember. So that's number three. Then we have this funny little girl, <laughs> which looks like this. Um, basically, I was inspired by her dress. See this Jane and Ronnie on her skirt. So she was this kind of kind of a rascal girl with a little monkey. The next bunny, another bunny, I already made one similar one which was called Minty. So this one is another attempt at this kind of rabbit which has arms that you can turn, wobbly legs and cute painted and stitched face with lovely fabric in the ears and I quite like it. If it wasn't for the buttons it would be nice for a baby as well but I like how the buttons look. A cute little heart buttons that I had a lot of. And the last but not least Mr. Frog and this fabric I've chosen. When I first saw it, I knew that it was going to be used for a, dog, for a frog and I chosen this stripy one to be the legs as soon as I saw it. So here we have painted eyes, painted um, mouth. I have some beads here to make it a little bit um, nice to feel and um, to have some more weight. These arms don't have anything in them, but you can tie them up like that. So I'm thinking, I'm not sure how safe it is for babies, but I thought this could be a nice toy. And I wanted to tell you a bit about this fabric and what happened to me. So as you know, I'm a big fan of Anna from Dunkelgrün and she was so kind. She sent me a parcel uh, back when I was in Indonesia and it never arrived. It's been there, I don't know how many months, but luckily it was returned. I thought this was gone and lost and I was so sad and I called the post office many times. But anyways, Anna was so kind and she's posted me the same parcel again back to here. I'm very, very thankful, Anna. This was a big, big surprise. This was like birthday again. And she sent me the strips of fabric that she dyed uh, herself to make up that uh, wonderful curtain that um, she's shown in one of her episodes and she had the strips she says that she didn't know what to do with but I know exactly what to do with them see how perfectly they match I have more colors so I'm just thinking of other toys that would uh, be lucky to have this unusual um, hand-dyed fabric with them I'm very happy how this <laughs> jumpy frog turned out and I really wanted to show you what else Anna got me uh, in that parcel. First of all, she had this really cute card that I have fixed up here <laughs> with this adorable hedgehogs. I love cats and I've always had a cat except for this past year where we've been traveling a lot. So I really adore it. And she's also gave me some souvenirs and really lovely tea. But of course, what was the best part of it is her hand dyed yarn, which is, hold on, I'll show you. Anyways, this was one color, I'll show you in a bit. And she has dyed it with cochineal and she was so kind enough to share 
to, to send me two of her hanks of hand dyed yarn. This is her logo. Please, if you haven't watched her episodes, you will definitely love them and I totally recommend. So this one, the colorway, <laughs> she's so cute. She wrote my name. So uh, once she was dying, she, she went to the zoo and she saw this chameleon and she was inspired to dye up some yarn in that colorway. And I absolutely loved it. So I think she remembered. And this looks exactly like that chameleon yarn that she's done. It has some, I don't know, teal, green, pinks and purples. And they are my colors, like totally. I would totally choose it myself if I was to choose. And this is 75 Superwash Merino Wool, 25 polyamide and uh, 420 gram, uh, meters per 100 gram. And it's hand dye with Anna, uh, by, with hand by Anna. And I'm so excited to start something, to start knitting something with it. And let's see, I didn't want to do it to show you how beautiful it looks in like twisted, but here we go. Ah, oh, this girl is amazing. I don't know how and how she does everything that she does, but it just looks amazing. And the second yarn, the cochineal one, because uh, we have this um, self-dyed cow that's going on. So we dye up our own yar yarn and we make projects with it. And um, I have been dyeing up yarn a lot, but I haven't really knitted anything until now recently with it. So anyways, um, Anna loves dyeing stuff with organic and very natural dyes and this cochineal amazing color that she sent to me is 100% superwash merino which is certified organic mullicing free blue sign certified production which makes it so much special and i have managed to finish an object with it Ta-da! a hat so what do you think So I decided that um, I don't need any uh, designs, patterns, and I can make up my own. So what I did was I found this beautiful heart pattern cables and I incorporated it in the front. And then I just measured, did a swatch, measured my head and just it, at this part, I tried three different times to decrease the way that I like it. It kind of looks like a berry, but I am quite happy with it. And this was needle number, oops, my phone fell down. Here we go. This was needles number three and a half. And at this part, because it was pretty tight and I had lots of gaps, I changed it into very small needles, which are these ones, which are 175 millimeters which I got from my grandma so they're pretty old but they worked fine and um, even though it's a bit um, loose I mean when I put it on I feel like even if I have lots of hair inside it would still it still stretches a lot and I'm thinking since it's a um, 100% wool that it might um, held a little bit and become a bit tighter so in just thinking that might happen, I decided to do like that. I'm very happy with this yarn. It was a pleasure to knit with, and the fact that it's done with cochineal, which is, you know, these little bugs which are crushed, and then you get all shades of this crimson red pinks from it. Um, makes it so much more special. So thank you, Anna, so much. And I uh, really recommend her yarn. So, speaking of um, self-dyed yarn, let me see. I have finally started to knit uh, something with my own hand-dyed speckled yarn. So, in the previous episode, I showed you how I tried up 
dyeing some of the New Zealand yarn, uh, which is skeins. Um, this was a 75-25 wool and nylon sock base. And of course, I'm making socks. I'm really loving the color that I'm getting. And I decided to speculate there's no point in making a pattern a lace or anything so I'm just making a vanilla kind of sock in my usual from some of the Russian books that I've taught myself from this weird looking heel but I don't mind it's for me so I don't mind the only problem I'm having with this because this is a four ply but it's very very thin and as I mentioned before I'm using a 1.75 millimeter needles for these socks and instead of my usual 44 stitches or I don't know how many I normally use, 48. Here I cast on, I think, 78, which is quite a lot. And that's why these socks are taking me quite a lot of time. But I'm loving the fact that I've dyed up my own yarn and that it's autumn now. The trees outside are these colors. And, uh, well, even though it's taking me a while, I'm loving it. It's really cute. So this will be my first um, entry into our self-dyed cow with Anna, which you can find in her Revelry group. Just type Dunkelgrün group and then uh, find the self-dyed cow. There are lots of prizes, by the way, and I will be also giving away a prize. I uh, just wanted to show you a little swatch that I've done with one other yarn, which is a bit similar. Here we are. And I decided to combine it with some acrylic white yarn, but I think I may not even do that. So here is how it's meeting up. And I have something in mind for this, but I don't think it's going to be socks again, because who needs that many socks? So yeah, this was first whip. The second whip is that you probably seen a hundred times, but I've been working on it. It's not an easy thing. It's a big, big blanket. The one that I've started on my grandma's birthday. And I have knitted... Where was that last time? Oh, I haven't done that much, have I? Okay. Well, something tells me this is the marker from the previous time. So I've just done this rose. I had a feeling I had done more. Here we go. This is my bamboo and cotton yarn that I got from Indonesia. And uh, so I'm just striping it up. The pattern is called uh, Spicier Life Cal that you can find on Ravelry. This is my second blanket and I'm loving it. I'm loving how it changes. But since the weather has gotten a bit colder, as you can tell, I'm wearing um, a shawl that I made back in Indonesia and I told you I will be wearing it sometime. Here we go. So yeah, I haven't felt like knitting anything with cotton yet, although I have some ideas. Another huge whip that I've been working on is my Robin sweater that I've started about a month ago and here I've done quite a lot of progress. So first of all, here we go. The body is done this is the back and i had to divide this back into three um parts that's why i have all these needles and all this little cute pandas hanging by the way i made a short video about the Haya Haya sharps kit that i got for new year and i'm loving all of the details so this is the back and i am at the front and this pattern is amazing because it's supposed to be very easy. And since I'm not much of a um, sweater maker, I get scared with of, um, designs that are too complicated and that require, require too much thinking or too many new things. And this seems like an easy one. Here I'm already divided in uh, for the neck line. And then I will just have to do the sleeves, which I might, I'm afraid I'll have to buy new yarn. But anyways, this is 
acrylic yarn, 12 ply, Four Seasons Marvel Denim Effects. And it has this really nice red with some white-ish speckles. So yeah, I've been trying to finish up my works in progress because I have so many new things on my mind with this beautiful yarn that Anna got me that I dyed up and that I have been spinning. So let me just see my notes. Oh yeah, another work in progress is another toy that I've started. It's going to be a bear. Um, some other bears that I've done, I'll show you when I show you a video from the yarn shop. But here it is. I really like the fabric. It's just so simple, but I'm going to make some funky scarf for it because these bears come with a funky scarf and a stitched face. Right, so this was my works in progress. Now, spinning. Uh, as you know, I've started spinning very recently and so far I have been doing some, but not a lot. And this is how much I have so far. And I probably am looking at the Rolex that I've done, the Poonies, and I still probably have just as much, but the colors change. So this one doesn't have much pink. And here I've started incorporating the pink. So the problem is that I love colors. So I decided to dye up so many different colors of wool. And since I'm spinning it into one um, thread, I'm thinking what kind of project could I use it? Well, it might be a blanket or a throw or a shawl. Actually, I want your idea. So if you have any idea, plus you can tell that I'm not a professional and you can see all kinds of uneven stuff. Well, you know, this, <laughs> this is as best as I could do. I'll try harder to make it better next time. But I think I also uh, was pretty hard when I was brushing. When I, make, I was making the punis, I wasn't very careful. I was in a hurry because I just borrowed it for one day, the, the, um, the board, the garden board. So yeah, that's the spinning. Next thing I want to show you is our yarn shop where we gather every week on Mondays and Wednesdays with our knitting group. And it's such an amazing knitting group. I have met many wonderful people there. And it's near and organized by the yarn shop, the New Zealand Fabrics and Yarns. Yarns and Fabrics. Fabrics and Yarns, yeah. Also, while I'm on it, I have bought some really... Um, hold on a minute, there was another one. I bought some New Zealand fabric, which they told me that this would be perfect for one of my dolls. And that's what I'm planning to do with it, to make some New Zealand, pr proper New Zealand doll. So please enjoy the video. Welcome to the New Zealand fabrics and yarn shop. Let's go inside. This is really awesome. 
this yarn shop. Um, it has amazing yarn. First of all, when I first, uh, we first lived in the middle of the city to kind of, before we found this place to stay. And uh, when I walked into this shop, I remember I was like, oh my God, this is all, like it screams New Zealand to you because the yarn that is there is artisan. It's mostly hand painted and it uses the organic merino from New Zealand with some possum and it has well you've just seen it has all these amazing um, batches of wool for spinning or for felting for crocheting sorry for um yeah wet felting dry felting making toys and this little crochet uh kiwi birds uh, bookmarks and amazing fabric as i was saying that inspires me to do so much with it if i had a sewing machine i would make some pouches or some project bags which is what i would love to do but in the meantime i wanted to share with you one more purchase that i treated myself to uh was it yesterday yeah it was yesterday so i know that i have a lot of yarn but i've been working really good i've finished this hat and i'm working on the sweater so i thought okay this yarn is too delicious not to buy it and I, here i wanted to show you that first of all i don't have a bowl winder so to wind up this bowl of yarn i used my own little life hack here it is hi guys just wanted to show you how i'm um rolling up my tanks of beautiful yarn that i got from anna and i don't have any nostopina or any bowl winder so I'm just using magazine that I rolled up and what I do is, <laughs> you'll be laughing, but I just put it on my leg and the technique that I, I think I've seen in another video, you start from the lower and you go um, like towards you if you look you start from the lower left to the top right and then what I do is I turn the magazine as well so that I have this uh, texture which resembles the, the one you'd get if you had a proper bowl winder yarn winder well you know as my grandma always says you just have to do with what you have. I could buy a bowl winder, but this works just as good for me and I really like this monotonous movements. I don't know. Isn't it a bit like knitting? You just take your thread, which is super um, warm and soft and squishy, and you just work with it. It's very soothing, very therapeutic. And I'm done. Here we are. <laughs> so I can pull from the middle and from the outside. I think I did a pretty good job. Magazine, bowl of yarn. Life hack. And when I was at the knitting group, I was, the share was kind enough, the the woman who works there to let me use the wool winder that is at the shop which is a knit pro wool winder and Sarah my other very good friend she's helped me to make up my own first ever cake and now I don't understand why they call them cakes because um, it looks yummy here's the picture of the yarn that I bought which is by touch it's hand painted yarns possum silk merino and it's merino wool 60, possum for fur 30, silk 10%, and it's 420 grams. I'm sorry, meters per 100 gram. Here it is. I'm expecting there to be a halo from, or maybe you can see a little bit, from all the possum, because um, as you probably have seen in the video from the shop, 
Possum has very short fur, like maybe this long. So obviously when uh, you cannot use it, just that, and that's why there's just a little bit in this beautiful New Zealand um, yarns. And what my friend was saying is that when you knit with it, in order not to get all of this fine fur in your face and nose, you just put it in a freezer, which dampens it without making it really wet. And it helps it when you, while you're knitting, it helps it to keep, to stick to the project, not on your hands or your face. And I remember when I was experimenting with felting, making toys with a needle, that that was the problem. I had this weird allergies. I would start sneezing and coughing and I think that trick with the freezer would be really handy. So as you can see in the skein, it's, you cannot see um, the colors together. They're kind of like, um, you can see how they were dyed, but you cannot really imagine how they would be in the project. I think this gives a better picture. So what I'm planning to do with this is I will make a shawl. I have a few patterns in mind and I'm just trying to be more uh, finishing the, the whips first before I cast on this beautiful baby cake. And also I like seeing it on my desk. It's just reminds me that I'm finally in New Zealand, the land of delicious, fuzzy, cute yarn and that I can be so lucky to actually have it and knit with it. So yeah, that's what I had to tell you about my knitting, spinning and doll making. And now I'm so excited to tell you the big news. So um, in the past year, so much has happened to me and this just continues being an amazing year. Just a year ago, I was in Turkey when I had just quit my teaching job and I was going to move to Bali without even knowing what's going to happen in a couple of months afterwards. And we got engaged, we got married, our family came, then we moved here and now I'm pregnant. Yes, I'm very excited and uh, I didn't want to tell in the previous episode because you're not supposed to say in the first months, but everything's going well. We don't know who is it going to be yet, but we already picked some names and uh, yeah. And I've been thinking about the baby projects, but I don't know why I haven't been so crazy as to start buying any baby stuff yet, which is good, I guess, um, because you're not supposed to do that before the baby is actually born. I mean, some stuff yet, but not a lot. But I'm planning, uh, as I showed you before, this speckly yarn that I dyed. I think I might do a, a baby uh, vest. And uh, it might look a little girly, which I do hope that I get a girl. But I still like this for a baby vest. And so what if my baby boy or... If it is a boy, then he has this bright colors. That's fine. I think it's too overrated. The color, um, you know, saying that the boys should only wear blue and the girls should only wear pink. It's kids. They should have bright and happy colors, no matter what they are. So that's my exciting news. And I'm planning on um, making some baby hats because apparently which I had no idea. It's going to be my first baby. Uh, when you get released from the hospital, all the babies, no matter what the season, are supposed to have a hat. So I'm going to try some baby hats and it's going to be such a nice and uh, fun and easy and quick project to make. The only thing I have no idea what the size should be. So if you have any recommendations, I would be really grateful. But then I guess it depends on the baby size. And we shall see. I'll make a few just in case and then I can donate them to the hospital, which is some of our knitting group members do. They just make premature baby hats and they gave them to the hospitals. So now I'm very thankful for you to stay in with me all this time. And uh, at the end of this video, I want to show you some clips from the zoo, the Auckland Zoo, which I really enjoyed visiting. Uh, 
this Monday. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. If you would like to get, um, if you want, subscribe and hit like. That would uh, be very great because that would make my video pop up and I would be able to tell you more about New Zealand yarns and all this exciting spinning, crafting and uh, all the things that I do here in New Zealand. Also, if you want me to investigate some things about yarn in New Zealand or wool or something, just comment below. I'll try to find out or ask around uh, because I understand when I was not here, I was thinking, oh, New Zealand is so far away. Like, I had no idea what this country is like or what kind of things you can find here. So I was curious. If you are, ask me. Um, last thing. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in the next episode very soon. Enjoy the video from the zoo. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>